Coming to you from the Hudson Media Group studio, this is Talking Politics. And I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino Vida Latino Spirit Online Magazine, certainly the weapon of mass disruption in Garden State Media, and of course, the people's choice and the people's voice. It is me, Fernando Uribe. Happy March to you all. Happy Women's History Month. Shout out to all the ladies that are important in our lives, of course, starting with my mother, my aunt, of course, all my best friends, and of course, all you ladies working hard out there each and every day. Not just only this month, but every month is really for you. Of course, folks, there's always a lot to discuss here, so let's get started. Here's what I'm thinking about right now. So, folks, I have to tell you that, you know, when I think about Hoboken, I think about early March, I think about what has always been an outstanding tradition in the Mile Square City, and that's always been the Hoboken St. Patrick's Day Festival slash Leprechaun. Now, this past weekend, we had the misfortune of seeing what was once known as Leprechaun pretty much be decimated. Now, we understand that there was a sort of maybe a partial parade, some floats, some Irish music up and down Washington Street. But by and large, folks, what seemed to be missing was the Leprechaun bar crawl. Now, let me just preface this by saying that I understand how residents can maybe have an issue with what these bar crawls represent. Now, again, let's just be very clear because it seems like, you know, some of the Karens that live in Hoboken have I've forgotten. There are only two bar crawls in Hoboken every year, early March, obviously the first Saturday in March, and certainly for Leprechaun, and of course in late December for SantaCon. Other than that, downtown Hoboken is what it is, full of many restaurants and outstanding bars, taverns, whatever you want to call it. And again, being part of downtown living is living near these establishments. And for many, many years, folks, I have to tell you that I absolutely loved Leprechaun, dressing up in you know green t-shirts, rocking the um, backwards baseball cap, getting all the beads, meeting girls. I mean, whatever, all the good fun that goes with Leprechaun, drinking, hooking up. I mean, again, it has been a rite of passage for many of us, for many of us that do it in our 20s, into our 30s, and sometimes into our 40s. But nevertheless, though, we've seen for many years now that Mayor Ravi Bala, very much like his predecessor, Don Zimmer, who, by the way, long before the concept of Karens ever existed, right, during COVID, if anyone ever looked like a Karen, it was indeed Don Zimmer. But certainly, Mayor Ravi Bala has continued the Karen-ish ways of his predecessor by ultimately trying to destroy all of nightlife in downtown Hoboken. Now, let me preface this by saying that in previous years, during Leprechaun, we understand there were some... Uh, rowdy patrons, there were some arrests, you know, public urination tickets, public vomiting. I get all that, folks. Some people can't hold their liquor. And I'm, I'm certainly not going to excuse bad behavior like that. But remember, folks, we have all were young once, and we all did some stupid things when we were young. And I, I, and I would argue that these bar crawls, I think, is really, I guess, the landing pad for some of this bad behavior. Nobody ever got assaulted, and nobody ever, you know, got sexually assaulted anyway, from at least from what I know based on police reports, but it was always a fun rite of passage in early March because, again, it reminded us that, hey, daylight savings time is right around the corner and that spring is right around the corner. So whether you go to the Leprechaun Bar Crawl in Hoboken, normally the first Saturday of March, or the next day down the shore in Belmar, or even in Morristown, which I believe is next weekend, again, the Leprechaun Bar Crawls are what I would argue a harmless piece of, I don't know, adulthood. But, of course, we all know that Ravi Bala you know, as mayor of Hoboken has sort of been dead set on getting rid of all nightlife for all intents and purposes. And what's interesting, though, is that, you know, Mayor Bala, as usual, his priorities seem to be misplaced. Now, I can say the following about the mayor, because quite frankly, I'm pretty well insulated politically. So no one's going to cancel me and no one's going to come after me, least of all, Mayor Bala or any of his minions at City Hall in Hoboken. But let me just say this, though, about Ravi Bala. Again, and to be fair, he's been a gentleman when I've asked him to come on my podcast on Blog Talk Radio. And certainly we've had some good conversations. But even trying to get through to the mayor's office has always uh, been really, I would argue, uh, kind of pulling teeth. And it's been quite laborious. But in recent years, we've seen the mayor, I guess, I don't know, be somewhat smug, if not condescending, to those who are critical of him. And it shows in the sense of running for re-election and certainly those that are running for city council this year. And hey, listen, I'm hoping that at least a majority can get back on there. They can hold the mayor accountable as it as it 
looks right now, Mayor Bala has the council in his favor, and I think, I'm, I'm hoping that that will change later on this summer, going into the fall, as Election Day is later this November. But let me just get back to what bothers me about Mayor Bala and this sort of sanctimony and this sort of level of moral superiority, or this sort of, let's be, let's be honest, folks, this sort of stench of, like, sort of scumbag entitlement that has come to represent Robbie Bala as mayor of Hoboken. And for me, again, I love to visit Hoboken. There are plenty of great restaurants, not just in uptown Hoboken, but supposedly in downtown. Going to Sinatra Park during the summers, I think, has been amazing. Certainly, the Arts and Crafts Festival up and down Washington Street in early May is always enjoyable and fun to take a girl out, let's say, on a first date or just to hang out with friends as the weather is indeed getting warmer. But what bothers me about Ravi Abala is this idea that, you know what, let's try to turn downtown Hoboken into basically Parsippany or Paramus. Now, nothing against those two great towns in Morris County and in Bergen County, respectively. But that's not what Hoboken is, folks. Hoboken has been a destination for young professionals, entrepreneurs, Gen X, Gen Z, whatever, millennials, to move into Hoboken because, you know what, it's a hop, skip, and a jump away from Manhattan. It's easy accessible, whether it be the PATH train, New Jersey transit buses, the, the, the nearby light rail stop, or, of course, catching a bus on New Jersey transit to get towards the Lincoln Tunnel, or, of course, catching Uber or Lyft through the Holland Tunnel or, once again, through the Lincoln Tunnel itself. So, again, downtown Hoboken, or much of Hoboken, continues to be an attractive destination to many individuals. Now, is it somewhere where you want to raise a family? Is it somewhere where you want to have kids and send to school? Probably not. You probably want to go to the suburbs. But by and large, folks, Hoboken again, remains a very attractive destination to live in. Still very expensive, not as expensive as downtown Jersey City or even parts of Bayonne or even maybe even parts of, you know, Weehawken along the waterfront. But really, I think what sets me off, though, is this idea that what does Mayor Bala believe he's going to accomplish by killing all of nightlife in the Moscow City? Again, folks, I get it. I don't live in Hoboken, so it's easy for someone to say, well, Fernando, you don't live here. It's easy for you to say, oh, it's just two bar crawls every single year. But folks, at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's two bar crawls, okay? Has the Hoboken police, during the time that Police Chief Ferrante was leading the organization, were they always expedient? Were they always professional? Were they always on time and making sure that any disruption or any problems were taken care of right away? Absolutely. Shout out to the Hoboken Police Department. All those brave men and women in blue down there in the Moscow City, you have my respect because you work hard and you've done an outstanding job over the years in maintaining order and really diffusing a lot of the potential problems that sometimes bar crawls can create. Right? Sometimes people don't know how to hold their liquor. We all know bad things can happen. But by and large, folks, what's happening to downtown Hoboken? Are we seeing brand new businesses? Are we seeing, for example, an Apple store? If there was ever a destination, see, this is where Mayor Bala, again, has his priorities misplaced. Okay? He wants to create more green space. That's all well and good, or whatever the case may be. Folks, you want to bring more commerce? You want to bring more revenue into the city of Hoboken? Get Apple to come to Hoboken. There are plenty of spaces in downtown where the mayor, for example, could really maybe petition Apple as a corporation to bring an Apple store into the Mouse Square City. Okay, folks, I don't know about you. I'm tired of driving to Paramus. I'm driving. I'm tired of driving to Wayne because obviously on Sundays, Paramus and a lot of Bergen County businesses are closed because of blue laws. So you'd have to go to the Apple store in Wayne, the Apple store in Short Hills Mall, or go across the river into Manhattan. And that's a pain in the ass. So if there was any of, if there was ever a destination, folks, that became attractive to have an Apple store, it's indeed Hoboken. Why the mayor isn't prioritizing that, I don't know. Or maybe even better yet, how about the mayor maybe prioritizing the plumbing system in Hoboken? We have pipes under the ground that are probably over 100 years old. But it seems like the mayor is more preoccupied in getting one of his partners in his law firm uh, becoming an assemblyman in the new 32nd legislative district and having that sort of say over who's going to be the assembly people there, right? While kicking out, you know, exceptional human beings like Annette Chaparro. See, I can say this. I can speak. I'm not speaking on her behalf. Don't get it twisted. But I'm going to speak again as someone who's a fan of Annette Chaparro. Ravi, what you did to Annette was wrong. Now, I don't know what your problem is because during the time that Annette Chaparro has served in the legislature, she has been an admirable legislator. I'm not, I haven't always agreed with all of her positions, maybe some of the bills she voted on, but let me tell you something about, about uh, Annette Chaparro. She's an outstanding woman, and she's an outstanding legislator, okay? Not so, listen, I don't have an issue 
with you know Jessica Ramirez, who will be one of the new assembly people in the new revamped 32nd legislative district. And certainly, shout out to Raj Mukherjee, the upcoming new state senator. But really, to pretty much push forward one of your partners from your law firm to be the other assemblyman in, in the new district, that doesn't reek of favoritism? And no one's calling out Ravi Baba on this? I mean, I don't know about you folks. I mean, other local media outlets maybe have chosen not to do that. But again, as I said, I don't have an issue because I don't really care if I piss off Robbie Bala. Again, I'm pretty well insulated politically, so I can kind of say what I want on this program about him. But that's just, not, never mind that. that. That's a black eye on, on Robbie, among many other black eyes we can name. But let me tell you something about this specifically. And the reason that I've chosen this photo to be running during the monologue is because what's happening in Hoboken, whether it's during rain season, flooding, but folks, again, it seems like the mayor is more preoccupied with development and getting new buildings and, I don't know, giving developers a break or whatever the case may be. All right, Robbie, that's your prerogative as the chief executive of the city of Hoboken. But you know what you've been ignoring for a long time? Infrastructure. You've been ignoring the pipes that are decaying under the ground. Sooner or later, what happened recently with PSCNG was going to be inevitable. Did you think that was never going to happen? Did you think that people, when they're, I don't know, when corporations like PSCNG are going to be doing some sort of maintenance work, that that potentially couldn't happen with a pipe bursting? Of course it was. But that's what you should be focused on. That's where your priority should be. Not, you know, killing nightlife, not trying to, you know, help one of your buddies from your law firm become the next assemblyman, okay, or trying to, I don't know, maybe just be fixated on more and more development. Ravi, get your priorities in gear. You're a grown-ass man, okay? It shouldn't take me, New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, an academic, an award-winning philanthropist, and quite frankly, someone that cares about Hudson County because... It's my home county. I've been born and raised here, and I love visiting Hoboken. The last thing I need to see is it being destroyed by Don Zimmer 2.0. And that's what I'm thinking about right now. Now I have some local stories for your consideration. And let's stay in the Moscow city of Hoboken. And a special thank you to Julio Reynoso from Hudson TV for his report on this story. It would appear that Second Ward Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher is indeed considering re-election and is looking to conduct a survey among her constituency. Now, apparently, Councilwoman Fisher is asking for their participation in a two-question survey to gauge interest as, as to whether or not she should run for re-election later this November. Now, the survey is asking participants two simple questions, whether they want Fisher to run for re-election and what ward they live in. Fisher has emphasized that, that there were no wrong answers and that the survey was an important barometer for her to sort of examine support from her constituency. Now, Fisher has been an active member of the Hoboken community for many years and is a strong advocate for environmental sustainability and affordable housing. If she indeed decides to run for re-election, she will be one of several candidates vying for one of the six Hoboken Ward City Council seats. Now, Fisher's survey has already been, received a, quite a positive response, folks, from many residents in her award, with some expressing their support for her re-election bid. Now, the survey also includes optional contact info questions that will allow Fisher to update her database and better tailor her future recommendations and communications with her constituents. Also, Fisher encouraged her neighbors and everyone interested to share the survey with others who may be interested in ultimately responding. She's also invited them out to reach out to her at any time on an issue that's quite frankly important to her. As, in, as the November 2023 election draws closer, folks, the Hoboken community eagerly awaits a decision of Councilwoman Fisher as well as other potential candidates. Now, let me just say this. I have had the pleasure of interacting with Councilwoman Fisher, and she's an absolute dynamite lady. And I, I know that she has the best of intentions in mind when it comes to her constituents. And quite frankly, it's not really along party lines because we know that municipal elections are nonpartisan per se. But I've always found her to be a very good healthy, conservative woman that leans right, again, not crazy right or anything else, but someone that's also commonsensical, okay? Councilwoman Fisher is also a woman that I believe, you know, listen, is more concerned with real issues like property taxes and not stupidity from the woke left in Hoboken like pronouns, which quite frankly, no one cares about, least of all myself, okay? But again, we look at someone like Councilwoman Fisher and we look at her as someone who has served admirably in the city council, and if there's ever a time, once again, folks, to start holding Ravi Bala accountable, it's by reelecting someone as good, as committed, and as dedicated as Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher. So for those living in Hoboken, folks, read into Tiffany Fisher if you haven't already. Lend us support. 
lend a hand, donate whatever you can, whether it's money or your time, and make sure you keep a good local legislator on the city council, like Tiffany Fisher in office, for another four years. Let's now move to Jersey City, and a special thank you to John Highness from the Hudson County View for his report on this very important story. Now, it appears that the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office is reviewing two separate instances where, quite frankly, some people just don't know how to behave themselves. And uh, let me give you some context here about why the story is so significant. Now, the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office is reviewing the Jersey City Police Department responses to two separate incidents that occurred over the weekend concerning excessive force. Now, the first incident led to at least one teenage boy being arrested after police responded to a call of a teenage girl being threatened with a handgun and Newport Center Mall, according to sources from, familiar with the situation who wanted to speak under the condition of anonymity with the Hudson County View. Now, it eventually led to a confrontation at the food court, which was caught on a 16-second cell phone video uploaded by HudPost. No less, you know, HudPost, 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 which, by the way, folks, great local resource, So, but unfortunately, they do tend to get themselves in trouble for sometimes publishing things that maybe they shouldn't, which we all know about already. Now, again, getting back to the story, where a police officer and the teenager identified as a 16-year-old male in the video was trading punches and then another teenager was resisting arrest as police were looking to detain him. Now the second video also uploaded by HUD Post was a 90 second cell phone video that shows a man in a black sweatshirt and red shorts being restrained by two police officers before a third officer punches him in the face. Now the video appears to show the man being detained uh, obviously, was spitting in the officer's face before he punched him, with the police officer holding the suspect's head down after they got him to the ground and eventually were struggling to get him handcuffed. The incident occurred across the street from King's Laundry, which is located at 753 Westside Avenue. Yes, folks, that's a dump. And believe me, you wouldn't want to be there in the daytime, much less nighttime. But nevertheless, folks, you know, we look at these videos, and let me just preface this by saying that I look at HuttPost. I know their editor and publisher... James Los Santos very well. He's a fellow member of Cowboys Nation and a fellow member, of, obviously, of good journalism and trying to put forth good content on a weekly basis. Uh, it doesn't always happen, obviously. I think many people have taken exception to HUD Post, even as far as you know, local officials taking exception to some of the methods being used by HUD Post. But that's not what this is about, though, folks. What this is really about is, quite frankly, people don't know how to conduct themselves. And I guess, you know, we live in this era of smartphones where everyone has an iPhone. And if you're a broadcast, for example, you'll have an Android, right? Which, again, I guess takes somewhat decent videos. I don't know. I don't like to deal with Androids. But the point is that everyone has a smartphone. And we live in this sort of smartphone society where behavior at all times of a day can be caught instantaneously, uploaded. And quite frankly, once it's on the Internet, it's there forever. Now, again, I'm always about innocence before guilt. The presumption of innocence is always important, folks. Again, as being an, an academic, someone who's taught constitutional law and really, really specializes in teaching about the Bill of Rights, I get it. Innocence is important here. But, folks, we've seen far too often way too many teenagers not knowing how to conduct themselves, whether in malls, whether in, in the public sector, wherever the case may be. We're even seeing this grown man. Uh, acting belligerently towards police. Now, what precipitated, we don't know, and perhaps and hopefully we'll get those videos. But the problem is, like anything else, folks, we tend to jump to conclusions, right? Because as we all know, back in the, in the summer of 2020, right, during the summer of love, when pretty much people were destroying public and private property, people were looting and rioting all in the name of a career criminal, right? Well, it seems like that became the rallying cry to, again, A, defund the police, and B, vilify the police for the foreseeable future. As, we, as we've all come to know, folks, defunding the police is an asinine concept. Only those who are, you know, the woke left and all these progressive fools that live among us in Hudson County and in New Jersey and even nationally think it's still a good idea. Well, try telling that to people that live in crime and areas and tell them that defunding the police is a good idea. But again, let me not digress here. And getting back to these specific instances, listen, when you watch the videos themselves, you look at a 16-year-old boy what he was doing beforehand, we don't know. Whether he was brandishing a handgun, a knife, I don't know. Obviously, it was enough for a young woman to call Jersey City Police. Now, one of the reasons I don't like going to Newport Center Mall is, quite frankly, just that sort of element that hangs out there. And before you get it, you know, before you get your panties in a bunch and you start shooting a load in your pants about, oh, there goes your eBay gaslighting again, I'm not gaslighting, folks. Some of the most hood rat type of people go to Newport Center Mall and they hang out in the food court. They hang out in the vicinity of the mall, okay? Not exactly the best of citizens out there. Again, whenever you go to Newport Center Mall, you have to be vigilant. 
look around, look around the vicinity, look around and just protect yourself. And again, be proactive in making sure you're not making yourself susceptible to any sort of crime. So I avoid Newport Center Mall when at all possible. But when I see videos like this and I see teenage boys not know how to conduct themselves, believe me, it gives me even more reassurance that, you know what, I'll drive the extra 20 minutes to go to Garden State Plaza or even go across the river into Manhattan. Now, as far as the other gentleman's concerned, again, we don't know what precipitated that belligerence with him, what prompted him to spit in the face of an officer, and what did you think was going to happen? And I get that residents get all flustered and say, oh, you know, what, you know, what the F are you doing? And, you know, they drop the N-word on there about, you know, don't do that to my, you know, my man over there. Well, I get it, folks. You know, you might be a little tribal when it comes to how you're going to personalize these issues, but understand something that when it comes to these videos, it's not easy. And I certainly don't envy the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office, who unfortunately will have to investigate these two incidents and find out what obviously resulted. Yes, we saw officers manhandle both suspects, but let's be honest, folks. If we've ever learned anything, whether you're white, black, brown, or whatever, when it comes to interactions with the police, be passive, be peaceful, and be calm. That helps to diffuse the situation before it escalates. But if you want to be all belligerent and be a tough guy and say, oh, you know, F the police, if that's your mentality, folks, well, guess what? You want to F around, you're going to find out, okay? You want to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. And it seems like way too many people tend to do that with the police, and they shouldn't, okay? These brave men and women in all these departments have a tough enough job as it is in all of these different municipalities because they all have different issues and different concerns, which again prompts, again, discussions about quality of life, you know, examinations in all of these townships. Let's not make their jobs more difficult by being belligerent, by being a smart ass, and quite frankly, by not knowing how to conduct yourselves. A lot of you are adults, start acting like it, especially when it comes to interacting with the police. Lastly, let's talk about a guy who's running for county executive and a guy who's always been a gentleman to me, and he's a great guy, obviously apropos with the name itself. Now, folks, I've gotten to know Craig Guy over the years, specifically with my rapport with the current Hudson County Executive, Tom DeGees, who announced earlier last year that he will not be running for re-election in 2023. Subsequently, Craig Guy will be running in the primary coming up in June, and he has some very, very big shoes to fill when it comes to Tom DeGees. But let me just talk about Tom for a second before I get to Craig. Tom has, once again, been a gentleman to me, a guy who I've always enjoyed a very good rapport with, a good dialogue with. And mind you, it's never benefited me whatsoever. I've never asked Tom DeGees for a job. I've never gone to the office of the county executive for a job, or I've never asked the Hudson County Democratic Organization for a job either. So when it's come to you know, really having a rapport and a friendship with elected officials, I've been able to have that with Tom DeGees. And I look forward to having that with Craig Guy as well. Now, folks, have you seen... And certainly a shout out to the operatives with, within the Hudson County Democratic Organization that have been getting Craig Guy out there for meet and greets, for, I guess, events involving elected officials, for the announcements of new legislative tickets. Craig Guy has been there front and center, and he's a guy who's worked behind the scenes for quite some time in Hudson County. Certainly a guy who's worked in law enforcement and has transition, transitioned really well into working in county government. And there's no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, when we think about Craig Guy, we think about his dedication to Hudson County residents, I'm confident that he's going to be able to do that once getting elected this June. Now, I understand that many of the progressives, many of the, you know, Hudson County, I don't know, Democratic Socialists or the progressive Democrats of Hudson County or the progressive Democrats of New Jersey feel that, well, you know, the deck is stacked against people who want to run and make this a more democratic process, excuse the pun, obviously. It's not about that, folks. It's about the fact that Craig Guy is trying to follow pretty much in the lineage of a county executive like Tom DeGees, who has served admirably for many, many years. And folks, here's one aspect of the job description that probably isn't written down anywhere. But one thing that Tom DeGees was really, really good at for decades, okay, was managing the egos of all the Hudson County mayors. We've had very different mayors over the years in Hudson County, all the way in North Hudson, down to Hoboken, down to South Hudson, even West Hudson. Okay, they've been very interesting personalities and very, I would argue, very, very unique individuals to deal with, to say the very least. So Tom DeGees did that, and he did it with grace. Never expected a pat on the back, never expected applause, never expected, you know, for him to be revered or a statue erected in his honor anywhere in Hudson County. That's not what Tom DeGees was about. 
And quite frankly, that Tom DeGee school of, I think, humility and grace and public service, you would think that Craig Guy certainly is a graduate from that school because he's conducting himself in the same way. Now, again, I'm looking forward to having him on the podcast, uh, certainly, you know, sometime this spring, right around primary season, and also, of course, on my other show uh, with Jersey First TV. But nevertheless, though, folks, one of the things that, I, I, again, and I can look at with Craig Guy is someone who has been just dedicated and someone who, quite frankly, now is coming from behind the scenes now to the front of the line. I think that's really, really a good perspective here. And a good shout out here to Julio Reynoso from Hudson TV for his report on this story. Certainly a very, very important dynamic of running for, for any sort of political office is getting endorsements. And this past week, Hudson County Executive Candidate Craig Guy received a considerable endorsement from the Fraternal Order of the Police in New Jersey as well as the Jersey City FOP in Lodge 4. Now again, both statewide and local police organizations have endorsed Guy subsequently. Citing his extensive experience, as I mentioned before, as a police officer and his commitment to public safety and supporting law enforcement and government. Again, folks, very much like Tom DeGee's, Craig Guy was never part of this woke crowd or all these idiotic progressives that were all about defund the police, defund the police, defund the police. No, all that stupidity and all that idiocy that we got to, you know, many people were, I guess, trying to embrace in the summer of 2020. Well, we all know, folks, that if it fell flatter, then the Mets do every October, okay? And that's not who Craig Guy is. Craig Guy is someone who ultimately appreciates law enforcement, worked in law enforcement, and is going to do everything in his power to further law enforcement, to ensure that not only the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office is well-funded and well-staffed, as well as the Hudson County Sheriff's Office. And you know what? To make sure that all the mayors in the municipalities of Hudson County can get the necessary funding that they need to make sure that they can maintain the quality of life that has come to really summarize almost all the municipalities in Hudson County, even Jersey City, even with some of the rough parts on the south side and even on the west side. But regardless of that, folks, whether it's Tom DeGee's and his, and his legacy, and now what we're going to see with a continuation with Craig Guy, I, I will argue that Craig Guy certainly is the man for the job, and I think Hudson County is going to be in good hands once he's elected this June during the primary and once he's elected later on this November, again, during the legislative season and certainly during all of the Hudson County elections that take place later on this November. And that's our show for this week. To check out all the excellent programming brought to you by the leader in independent media right here in Hudson County, the Hudson Media Group, check out their websites, www.hmgtvshows.com as well as www.livestream.com slash hmgtv. Don't forget to subscribe to the Hudson Media Group on YouTube. Make sure you like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to check out new episodes, ladies and gentlemen, of the seven-time award-winning podcast, Talking the Hudson, by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Talking the Hudson. You can download the episodes from any PC, Mac, smartphone, or tablet and listen to them anywhere at any time. Recent guests have included Councilwoman Mira prince Array from Jersey City, the Dean of Hudson County Journalism, Al Sullivan, and many, many more exclusives you don't see in Hudson County politics anywhere else, especially on Blog Talk Radio. Let me just preface this by saying, folks, that this past, really to start on March 1st of this year, we celebrate six years on Blog Talk Radio with, again, the inception of Talk on the Hudson. I can't say enough about how grateful I am to everyone who tunes in every single month to episodes of Talk on the Hudson because, folks, it's the longest-running episodic podcast in Hudson County political history. I'm proud to host it, I'm proud to bring it, and I'm proud to also give you a different perspective of what's going on in Hudson County politics. So make sure you like it on Facebook, of course, and follow it on Instagram. Don't forget to check out my own Instagram, folks, at the Fernando Zone, and also on Twitter. It's the same handle, at the Fernando Zone as well. Make sure you like me on Facebook. And always remember, folks, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always Talking Politics right here with the Hudson Media Group. I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino, Vida Latino Spirit Online Magazine, the weapon of mass disruption in Garden State Media, and without a doubt, the people's choice and the people's voice. Yes, it's me, folks. It's Fernandi Ribe saying so long, and as always, thank you so much for watching.